Welcome, everybody, to the Roar Podcast. This is John Smith with John Rutan. We decided to bring on Joe Hindi today. Joe Hindi is a local citizen that is active in the community. He's constantly on Facebook, Hills.Hot Debates. He's constantly bringing in uh, new information. He is not scared to confront the corruption of the community. And Joe's been thinking about doing his own podcast show, and so we brought him on our show today to uh, reveal some information that he has, and hopefully uh, Joe can come back and start doing his own podcast. So uh, why don't you go ahead and say hi to everybody, Joe, and uh, and we'll get going right into this. Hello, folks. Well, I wanted to hit a little bit tonight on uh, the Hillsdale Policy Group. They've bent the pendulum towards college interests. A good example of this would be 42 Union, the Kiefer, the airport, and in my opinion, the Neslots. Who, who are some of the people on that policy group? Well, well, why don't you back that up, John? What is the policy group? Yeah. Well, the Hillsdale Policy Group was formed by Mary and Gary Wolfram. Gary is the economic professor at Hillsdale College, and his wife is our economic developer. There's a con- conflict of interest there to me. These um, folks are uh, doing projects that, in my opinion, indirectly benefit our college, and they have little or no value to the average resident. Yes. Uh, and yes, some of those are very obvious. Good examples would be 42 Union, uh, even the Kiefer that we bought for $410,000. If you look at the feasibility report, it's overwhelmingly supported by the college. Well, what what is 42 Union Street? Well, uh, 42 Union Street, in my opinion, was a $1.2 million coffee shop that created four jobs. It's uh, above the coffee shop. We have eight apartments. Each apartment uh, has, I believe, four bedrooms. I could be wrong. It might be three bedrooms, but they the uh, college uh, expressed a need for student housing, and it was reported in the collegian. So these eight apartments house our college kids because the college expressed a need for student housing. Now, if, if I can, just real quick, uh, a little bit of history on that. Um, <clears throat> does everybody remember when the college built the dormitories down there by the Arboretum? Sure. Okay. <clears throat> just before they did that, uh, myself and two other people were in a, in a company called um, uh, College Town Rentals. And we were buying houses and we were fixing them up and turning them into apartments and putting co- and trying so that we could put college kids in there. At that time, the dean of students, um, there was a there was a funny thing going on under the table. Only certain people, only certain people got to um, rent to the college kids. The way it worked was. Be careful people, now, John. My grandpa was dean of men at Hillsdale College for I know, 31 years. I know, but, but it wasn't him. I'm just, I'm just, having, <laughs> I know. I'm just having fun with I you. I know. Uh, but anyway, the way it worked was if they liked you and you were in with them and there was some um, secondhand deals going on, then your apartments, uh, the students were recommended to your apartments. Our apartments, we couldn't get students recommended to. So we uh, we had to go out there and beat the bushes to try to find them. So there was some people that were being uh, unfairly. Yeah, it was unfair. There were some people that they were directing students towards because they were people that had an interest with the college sure. and were going. So us outsiders weren't getting anything. Now, what they told us is when they were we, picking winners and losers. Sure. Like they always do. And we started doing a few houses. I think we had two or three of them at the time. And we were told, well, you know what? We're not going to send any students your way because uh, here, as soon as we get these dorms done, uh, none of the students are going to be allowed to live off campus. <laughs> that's And that really, that wasn't true, yeah, that's, but that's exactly what they told they, us. I, I don't know their percentage that live off campus. I, I was told at one time, and I and I can't remember now. Um, there's a couple, two or three hundred kids that live off campus because yeah. there's not enough student housing. Because I think there's isn't the the schools like twelve hundred, thirteen hundred students? Roughly about thirteen fifty somewhere in there. Okay, that's okay. So what does this forty two union have to do with anything as far as like as an average citizen? Well. As an average citizen, uh, it brings little or no value to most people. Uh, you know, it it brings more of a value to the college, I believe, than it does anybody. So you mean our taxpaying dollars paid for that? Correct. As our, a citizen, I, it was it was grant money. It was it tax dollars all over the state of Michigan. Grant money is where they st- the state steals money from a whole bunch of people and then gives it to one person. Right. Okay. So like so the state so they took money from the state. You guys are saying to pay for this 
coffee shop slash apartment place? Correct. It came with strings, and they so they had to put a business in it. And, of course, you know what we got going on with the Myers and Brett Boyd not wanting it to come in. Of course, Brett didn't think about uh, any of the other coffee shops when he brought Big B's in, and neither did the city when um, they did this. Uh, 42 Union Street place? 42 Union. They didn't think about any of the other coffee shops when they brought that in. Yeah, what's the name of that coffee shop right there? It's called... Um Rough draft. Rough draft. That's right. That's right. I know, I've I, been in there. I haven't been in there. They've got good coffee. I didn't I've, see any locals I've been in, in there. there. It, it's too much. Of, I, I I lived in Washington for a little bit. It was. It's too much of a hipster. It's trendy. <laughs> yeah, it's too hipster for me. So yeah. how how much how much did this cost the taxpayers? One point two million dollars. Okay, and does it, to build a an eight uh, duplex unit, John? Does that seem excessive? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Now, one of the things they were trying to do is because they did have the Olsons building there that was an eyesore. Let me let me tell you something, folks. When we had Doug Ingalls, mayor of Hillsdale, he brought Cobra Motorcycles to Hillsdale, Michigan for one third of what that coffee shop cost us. Three hundred and eighty five thousand dollars brought Cobra mo- Motorcycles to Hillsdale, Michigan that created 40 jobs. $1.2 million coffee shop of taxpayer dollars only maybe made four jobs. So we're talking one-third at uh, ten, tenfold jobs right, of right. what the other one costs. So essentially, we're stealing from people to pay for four jobs that benefit the college. Because it, it only benefits for their housing. It benefits how trendy their coffee shop is in the community. And it, they got it essentially done for free. Yeah, well, I mean... Um, and it's not really benefiting... Like, I can't go rent a place there, right? Well, I don't think they got it done free. I think the people that are that are running she, that, the I woman, she The did. woman that owned it had to put a matching yeah. amount in, but... And um, to be fair, I did hear that those people did do an awful lot of elbow work. They were they were elbow grease. Oh, you're talking their, about the coffee shop. Yeah, the, the coffee shop uh, slash apartments. I heard the people that are actually own that really did put a lot of well, blood, sweat, wh- and tears how did in they it, too. How did they pick a coffee shop? Why why couldn't it be a pet shop or why couldn't it be Well, because it had to go it's it's like anything else. The college is the tail that wags the dog. It's gotta be something well, that if they it, approve if of. It's, I was gonna say like. if it's public money, it seems like it could be anybody's well, that's true, but you know, um, the Wolframs have always wanted a college town. You know, they want this town like Ann Arbor. Yep. Uh, God forbid. I hope it never gets like it'll, Ann Arbor. It'll but, never. Uh, <laughs> we're, we'll never be Ann Arbor. But we can't because we're not. We don't have the venue. We don't have the the sheer size that Ann Arbor has. And this is what they don't understand. They might understand economics, but you know, for us to be kind of like Ann Arbor, it'd be like if our industrial base was in Camden. And then Hillsdale was the college town. Well, then you can do that because you don't have to have the icky blue collar people next to the college because they're clear down in Camden, right? <laughs> well, that would be the size and the scope of what we've got in Ann Arbor. But we don't have that here. Well, I think that's what's keeping industry out is, sure, you know, the college exactly doesn't it. want that sticky, sure, we don't icky, icky uh, blue collar fumes yeah. coming into the town. Because the only place they can go in Hillsdale is in the farmland area. Well, but icky blue collar people, they do things like bowl and they do, you know, we're, they're not, they're not, uh, they don't walk around in hipster style and, 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 yeah. and go to, and talk to the baristas and have coffee and, and, and pretend like they're writing a book. <laughs> yeah. Or paint, or painting a picture. Yes. Yes. Some, mo- some more tax dollars. The Kiefer and the Dawn. Uh, $410,000 to purchase the Kiefer. And uh, the estimate to make that uh, what Mary Wolfram wanted was $4 million. Well, they had a developer come look at it. And for what she wants, he told her $10 million. So, And then the, the dawn came with that, okay, which we were supposed to keep. Now what's happening, or excuse me, which we were supposed to sell. Mm-hmm. Now what's happening is the city's decided to keep it and just took another $1.8 million grant for that. Yeah. Not, not including smaller, like $150,000 for the organ, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, well, that's, that's organ. not going to be uh, fixed up with public money. Oh, it's, okay. Uh, Thank it's, God. We, we uh, had Tiffa come in and speak to that, Rob. And Rob Sosha and um, uh, God bless his heart, he was paying attention to social media and listening to all the people harp about, you know, tax dollars being spent on it, blah, 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 blah. So he came to our meeting and he actually uh, set things straight, let council know there. So that's fundraise money. Uh, well, it, I'm not sure what it's 
going to be probably donations. It'll yeah. be it'll be private. It'll be phil- philanthropic money for Th- sure. That's that's perfect. That's what it should. Yeah, be. Yeah, that's for. what it should be. Um, so so we got another ha- damn near a half a million dollars for the keeper house that's sitting empty as we speak. Right. right, but you know the 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 idea is that that will be a hotel because you know all of our hotels are so overbooked all year long. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, well, th- well, the days in. Je- what did Jeff King say about that? The days in's only what fifty percent, forty percent, forty percent, forty forty percent occupancy rate is what you need to make a hotel viable. Just to make it, just to make it no, stay. No, yeah. I, t- I take that back. You need a sixty to seventy percent occupancy rate to make a hotel viable. Yeah, because you need forty in just the to feasibility break even. report for the ca- uh, for the kefir. It's only showing a forty percent occupancy rate in this area, so uh, it's a loser right from the get go, folks. Yeah. Right. So, but but they've been massaging the numbers. See, and this is one of the things that we found. Oh, you know, by the way, the the feasibility report does also show overwhelming support by college by the college. Sure. So, uh, I mean, again, it's another college deal. We had 42 Union College deal, the key for the Don College deal. You've got, uh, you know, the backdoor deal at the airport. That's all a college well, deal. How, how much is how much does it cost for to repair the Don? I know that's not in great shape, right? Oh, it's in horrible shape. So how much does it cost on the rep- so we got a half million dollars in the key for not including the four million dollars to primp that up. Well, they, and, they've got more problems with the Don because mm-hmm. the wiring actually goes over into the neighbor's building, if I remember cor- the the electric. Yeah. And it would cost too much, I think, for them to redo all that. So they were going to leave it that way. You but know, I heard the roof is collapsing on that place. Well, they're, I don't you know, know if it's collapsing, but it's in bad and shape. They're, 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 they're griping about the basement. You know, I'm not how, how dirty it is, but I, I'm not sure exactly what was but, down there but, if it was coal but, fired. But we're or, knees deep in this deal with the Dawn. Is, you know, so we need to not only fix up the Kiefer house, but we fix up the Dawn as well, which is what? Uh, in, in in dollars. Well, but the problem is the free market usually is very efficient at deciding what goods and services an area needs. Right. It just does. It, it sure. does it automatically. But what we're trying to do is the college, when they have two big things a year, then not all of their um, donors and all the people that they're trying to parents. wine and dine and, and, and wow. Contributors. Yeah, can stay right. Or parents, you know, that are paying yeah. huge money for their kids yeah. to go there. Boosters. Yeah. So it's hard to keep them close. And so they're going to places like Angola or uh, Cold, water. Cold Water or Jackson. And then they have to drive, you know, half an hour, 45 minutes, an hour to get, back to, the, yeah, get back to the college. So what they want is they want people to be able to stay local when they have those two big things. Okay, well then, you know what? The college should build a dormitory uh, type a mo- build setup. a motel yeah, yeah. or something like that. Well, instead of that great big huge three well, million dollar house or the, whatever it the is prob- they built, the problem build a motel. is the problem is john is that for how mo- how many weeks a years uh, how many weeks out of a year do they have these functions at the college? Yeah, oh, that's like not going to make the that's yeah, not going to make the key for viable. Yeah, you got fifty two weeks, so fifty weeks it's going to be set and empty, and then two weeks it's going to be full. That's well, not you got work. you got homecoming up there, I think, or parents oh, even if week, it was five graduation. Times. Let's let's be honest. Yeah. Even if it was ten times, yeah, ten times a year is not going to make it viable. Yeah, it'd have to be twenty six to it'd have to be twenty six to to thirty weeks a year. So again, that's more tax paying dollars that paid for that. Keeper right. house and paid for the Dawn Theater, right? And right? the people that benefit, again, would be the college on those few weekends that they hmm. want it. But without letting the private market do it, by trying to use public money to create something and pick winners like they always try to do, is bad. Because anytime we get outside that free market and we start trying to mess with things, we get ourselves into trouble. And that's exactly what they've done in this situation. Well, it's it's kind of funny you mentioned that, John, because they've already had two offers to um, sell the kefir. And uh, Mary Wolfram has said that you just don't really fit what we want and uh again they're you know they're why does you're, you're talking about the free market and sure. yet we're just letting it slip by who, who, sure who is this mary person that that is denying i mean why does she get the she's authority married here? to the economic uh <laughs> professor at the college because <laughs> yeah yeah he's he's you know a god to them he he knows what he's talking about but yet he's uh been helping this city since 2006 7 maybe even before that and he hasn't even turned it around yet i mean 
mean, well, I'm not going to say he doesn't know what he's talking about, but well, a lot of people who, have who agendas he? that you don't know about when they're doing things, and I think that's more the more the situation here. There's an agenda that's being done that we don't know about um, because it's not for our benefit. At least it, transparency isn't there, right? He's yeah. he's the economic. Cur- uh, professor uh, for Hillsdale College. Who, why don't you just name who he is? Gary Wolfram and his wife is our economic developer, Mary Wolfram. So as a regular citizen, these are the people that are stealing from us and we kind of want to say no to those type of people. Yeah, well, I think, you know, everybody in in uh, the city, as far as the government goes, thinks that um, the college is gold and we're just going to bend and, and give them what they want. And uh, what they don't realize is, you know, that's taxpayer dollars. And there's a recall going on in, in uh, Adams Township right now, folks. And, you know, these guys are really putting their, se- their seats at risk if they think that they can keep doing us like this. You're talking about Hillsdale City. Yeah, right. Or Hillsdale County. You know, there's nothing wrong with economic development. You know, I, I'm going to be flat out, but you can't forget about those of our, those of us already here and, and, and reducing us to a, a, a secondary status. Well, well, me and John had a show, or John and I had a show uh, a couple I'm weeks ago. You, you changed that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not a yeah, English major or anything, but, uh, but John and I did a show a couple weeks ago on taxation, and we already... All taxation is a form of theft, one way or another. Yep. Correct. You know, there's ways, you, if you can opt out of it, that's another thing. But right now, it's forced by at, the, at gunpoint. I, I got in trouble this uh, weekend with yeah, my you family could, for you saying could, that. <laughs> you oh, could, did you? Yeah. You could g- convert to an Amish. You know, well, regardless. So all, all this taxation on this big, heavy ticket items were being stolen from, and they're not doing anything with it. Like tonight's meeting in Hillsdale, they're talking about buying a ladder truck. Well, hell, we could have bought two or three ladder trucks with these, these investments. Right, correct. Well, and, it, and then they're, they're talking about diverting funds to be able to buy a used ladder truck that's only going to last maybe 15 well, years. Well, but here, here, just let me throw a few numbers out. <laughs> We're buying two hangers for 127000 and it's only going to cost 122000 for a ladder truck. So <clears throat> why don't we buy the ladder truck and put no, the hangers... 250 on the ladder truck. 250 Okay, well, I, saw, I saw a figure of $122,000. The, the number is irrelevant. But, but the fact of the matter is, if, if you wanted to buy, let's say you wanted to buy a brand new big screen TV, but on your way to the store... Uh, one of your tires goes flat and you lose the water out of your radiator, what do you do? You go, well, I'll deal with that later. Uh, I'll just leave my car here alongside the road. I'm going to walk to Best Buy, get that big screen TV and get home because that's what I was going to buy. No, you take the money that you were going to spend on the big screen TV, right? You have the car towed, you have the radiator fixed, and you have the tire on it, and you decide that maybe two or three weeks or the next paycheck or the paycheck after that, then you'll get the big screen TV. you got to have your priorities. So if we need this ladder truck to save people's lives, and I heard that there was a contract signed with the uh, hospital that, they, that, the, that the fire department said they could handle anything that they had out there, they need that ladder truck for the... Not right now they can't. No, they can't because they need that ladder truck for that for the helipad. Yeah, so the hospital the hospital they made a backdoor deal with the hospital. Right. So the hospital's sitting there unprotected when they thought that they were and yet we're buying two hangers that it's going to benefit the college and not the people of Hillsdale, okay? Correct. Let, and that, and let me let me add John, that was all a backdoor deal to begin with. Sure they it was. they want the airport had a new apron put in, uh, $800,000 in grant. Uh, 200000 coming out of our local economy. Now, Mr. Mackey says that he's got another grant coming in for $100,000 to uh, just take away from basically instead of 200000 coming out of our local economy, it'll only be 100000 coming out of the local economy because he's picking up a grant for 100000 Okay, but he's picking up a grant for 100000 to put back in his pocket? No, usually when you pick a grant up, there's specific things that that has to be used for so we're still out to two hundred thousand dollars they're just bringing hundred thousand dollars in to do something else with it this is this is the ridiculousness of it right well i mean it really helps if people can understand the history of of hillsdale well it doesn't take an accountant degree (laughs) no it doesn't take a phd to figure out what's going on to, to understand that if you need a ladder truck you don't buy hangers right no you well you know there's only certain grants that will go to I get that things. like uh, uh, money allocation right. I get it it doesn't matter here's the thing we had two hundred thousand dollars in tax paying money that we put in with an eight hundred thousand dollar grant to get an apron that won't bring one red cent into this county won't bring in one penny are they are they charging Pat Sajak to park on it I doubt it I doubt it but even if they were 
they he Pat Sajak would have to pay more than what his plane's worth to park it there for a weekend for us to get any return on our investment, right? So two hundred thousand dollars would two hundred thousand dollars gone a long way towards the ladder truck? You betcha, oh, yeah. would have. Also, well, also let, let me let me say explain something too because this happens a lot, particularly with young uh, young adults when they're poor and they're kind of like living trying to make ends meet. Living a lot paycheck of, to paycheck. Yeah, living paycheck <laughs> to paycheck, and they borrow money from family and stuff like that, and they're in debt in certain area areas, and then their mom decides to go out and buy them say nice clothing. And then they go around the people that they're in debt to in this nice clothes. They're like, hey, how, how'd you buy those clothes? Well, my mom bought it for me. It creates like this animosity. Like, well, you should have had your mom pay your debt instead of buy your clothes. So, like, we see, I see that kind of like in this realm. Even though there's money allocation, mm-hmm. why the hell are we doing these improvements when we need to work on the infrastructure? It's called they, priority. They, right. It's they called got priorities. Their priorities wrong. That's right. It's, right. Uh, and, and I and I and I watch that in other people too. When when I see people that are like, man, I don't have any food for my kids, but they've got a whole refrigerator full of beer and they're smoking five packs of cigarettes a day. It's like, dude, uh, you would have had money for your kids. Got to have my smokes, for the food. Man. That's right. Where's your priorities? Beer and cigarettes come before the food for your kids? No, absolutely you gotta, not. You got to understand, John, there's influence there. Yeah. You know, there's there's influence. Sure. It's, it's not, you know, they're, they're a piece in the college. You know what I mean? That's well, what I said. And that's, that's, what the tale. Show, that's what this show's about. Yeah, that's it, the is, tale is, that wags the dog. Well, yeah, the show's about that. Here, yeah. Here's what people really need to know. The apron cost us eight hundred thousand dollars of grant money, two hundred thousand dollars out of our local economy. There was supposed to be a five point nine million dollar new terminal built, which isn't going to happen now. But I, I don't know if I don't know how many people you know really know the history of Hillsdale very well. But the old Barber Drive retirement community that failed is now our Nez project. People, they wanted this new apron, this new five point million dollar terminal. To sell those Nez lots. What, what is what are the Nez lots? The Nez lots are where they tore down seventy or ninety homes up around the college. See, they couldn't get the four twenty five passed by the voters to to build their little retirement community down on Barber Drive. So they moved it up into the city to where they could get that electric, water, and sewer for free. So now it they basically just moved the project, but. Uh, the terminal and the new apron is nothing more to draw these filthy rich to, you know, buy a little piece of the hill and off the taxpayers' back. And well, here's, here's my thing. I got nothing against the filthy rich. <laughs> In fact, well, I, I mean, either. I, I, I like mean, the I'm filthy rich. I, too. I, I've worked for the filthy rich. They pay well. Right. Uh, the poor people don't pay so well. But so I, I like the filthy rich. The problem is that I see here is they're catering to the rich to bring the money into the college, not into the town. Now, granted, if the people come, they are going to do things like buy gas and they're going to do some things around. But that's part of where Mary and Mary Wolfram's whole thing is. Let's get these uh, coffee shops and these. We, we still have, even with these little shops and these retail things that they've been bringing in, we still have this us and them mentality. We still, the people from the town are still the townies. And so what happens is they bring certain things in for the college group and the college people so that they can go to that are very hipster and very up and all this other stuff. And a few of the locals go there, but not many. And, well, and, you know, so this is kind of this whole atmosphere. It's a whole environment. Yeah. And an entire environment that they're creating here. And it's not just one thing. It's it's an insidious string that runs through a lot of things. Well, so so what happens is people say, oh, well, that's a conspiracy. Well, wait a minute. OK, we're not saying that there's a dark smoke filled room with secret handshakes here where people are doing things. We're saying it's natural. It's natural law. Right. There's certain people that have certain influence, that have certain money, that know how to do things and get things done. And they're doing that for the best of intentions in their for for their um, or since benefit. It, since, it, since it is a business, first and foremost, all good men have evil intentions. But there's nobody that's 100% evil, nor is there anybody that's 100% and, good. And Hillsdale College is a business, first and foremost. Yes. So they're going to do what's business. What's in good, their best yeah, interest. Yeah. Well, exactly. What, what the problem is, is, you know, Mary and Gary are focus, focusing on all this economic development off the taxpayers' back. And then she's focusing on nothing but retail. Well, I'm, I'm here to tell you, folks, you know, you can't support that retail without industry. We've got 100 acres of, of, of industrial lots sitting out there just waiting for somebody to fill you know it, it's like this, so they're this, putting their efforts into the retail instead of the industry well, well yeah. that and the college this nez project you know it's like hillsdale college build it and they were they'll come well you know why not do that with our industrial park well here's the but but 
the thing is this, in, in a lot of local governments, do I see this a lot with local governments, especially in Michigan, it's horrible. Retail money is quick, fast, easy money. It really is. It's quick, fast, easy money. And it money. can be trendy. Low end yes. jobs. But it's but that's very few jobs. But what it does do is it does bring in that very quick, easy money. The problem is it looks flashy. Yeah, but the problem is if you have a whole bunch of retail, but there isn't any people that have jobs that have money that can go to the retail, then what happens is the retail, it, it dies on the vine. So what happens is you get an area where a whole bunch of retails come in and things go and then they drop and then retail comes in, they go and they drop. Now, one thing that bothered me was here a few years ago, I seen like two or three different check cashing companies come in, right? Sure. Anybody that's studied any economics at all, when they when you start seeing these check and go places come in, you know that what's going on is you got way more poor than you used to have. Thirty one percent poverty. That's rate right. So limits. as soon as you start seeing those those groups that come in now and this is this is for the city council the business that they run is legal but it's not moral right because there's a big well, difference they, between something lawful, being lawfully, legal lawful we, we, we we've got horrible morals ethics and but see the uh, thing is I, I always hear that well but it's legal yeah well, right. just it, because I, it's legal doesn't make it sure. moral doesn't right. make it right Correct. and so what happens is when we start seeing those companies come in we saw those come in and that there wasn't a red flag to anybody and then they still kept going after this retail stuff still kept pushing this college town idea idea kept pushing people out of the industrial areas and so now we don't have jobs we've got 31 percent poverty um and they're pushing people out of the city yeah and now and then and then the, the and then I, I love that statement that one of the city council members said that well we're not made, we're not uh, in the business of taking properties oh really really well there there's a few people i'd like you to talk to then are the properties you See, took that, from them isn't that what blight's all about well, they took Mary Smith's property, right? It's the only thing she had, and they took it from her. Yeah, mm-hmm. we couldn't get anybody involved yeah, in we that. Talk about nobody Mary could. Smith. Nobody would help her. No, nope. we we talk about Mary Smith's property every episode. <laughs> Just about. <laughs> we got now. we got Jeff Fasikas is building up there next to St. Anthony's uh, Church. They're trying to take right now. Yep. So, um, so nobody'd help him. Nope. Mary, Mary Wolfram told him that we'll never help you. So Jeff. Wolf, Wolfram and Company um, is involved with multiple projects that are benefiting the college and not benefiting the taxpayer, even though the taxpayer is forking out all the money for this. Is that correct? That is correct. correct. And just another really quick piece of history on Mary is when they started the uh, economic development, they violated the law when they put her on it. And so there was some there were some things that they did that they violated the charter. Yeah, the charter. So they they violated a lot of things. But then again, they they, who's they, John, the city council. So but then again, they laugh at OMA violations like it's nothing anyway. How long long ago was it? This was in 2010. 2010. So yeah. any of the members on the board today that are still on that, that were part of that? Mm, I don't believe so. But like Sharp or... It doesn't matter. There's still people there that have lived here this long. And if they've been involved, if they're on that council right now, they've been involved in politics. So here, most of them should have it, known that's what was a, going That's on. a city council that you're talking yes. about, right? Yeah. Yeah. Here's but the, they, they can do it now, though. They can, they can get rid of her. Well, they, didn't they just recently get rid of her? Here, here's the deal now. Mary and Gary Wolfram, who own the Hillsdale Policy Group, you know, we're running the city. Along they're, with the college. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. They're, well, they're for get, the college. They're getting the boot at the end of the year, and uh, we may be able to recover our infrastructure and our tax base with both of them uh, gone now, which, uh, in my opinion, they harmed. Yeah, they harmed the city. Yeah, well, yeah, the tax base and yeah. the uh, infrastructure for sure. I mean... Um, so, so the board decided to get rid of them this year. Well, after a lot of preaching from me and and others and, uh, you know, claiming that, hey, these these projects are indirectly helping the college, you know, and and that's one thing that I don't really like about our, you know, Dr. Morrissey's a good friend of mine. I I love the man and everything. He's retired, by the way, from the college, but we do, we did have, we did have uh, Patrick Flannery on it. The six. Yeah. And uh, then we got Matt Bell, who's on it right now, but here's how it works. You know, if if those two councilmen that are working for the college are voting on projects that directly benefit them or even indirectly benefit them, and that has anything to do with making the endowment go up, they're butter and they're bread. Yeah, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. You told me this earlier, uh, Joe, and I was actually kind of, like, surprised about this. First off, the average person doesn't know what an endowment is. Correct. So, John, why don't you explain what an endowment is? Uh, an endowment is um, philanthropic people that uh, let, let's say let's say I'm worth uh, 20 million and my kids are already taken care of and everything's good, 
and so I can take care of things. Well, to keep my my children from paying huge amounts of um, inheritance tax on stuff, what I can do is I can make an endowment to somewhere that is a 501c3 or something that's... Uh, um, uh, like Hillsdale College. Yeah, like non-profit. Hillsdale College. Nonprofit, something like Hillsdale College. And so what I do is I say um, my house and my property is mine. I have a living trust until I die, and then everything converts over to Hillsdale College to be used for. I can either state specifically what it, what I want my money to be used for, or I can tell them that they can divvy it up into certain percentages and use one percentage. You know, use, like a new uh, hall or something. Yeah, or in that use ten percent of it to, to for uh, scholarships and grants for students. And so that's what an endowment is. Uh, is it's just philanthropic money so, that's been given to them. So how does this work with Bell? Um, you're, that's he's city council, right? He is city councilman. He's paid by the college, and here's how it works. See, if Mr. Bell doesn't abstain from a vote that would indirectly or directly benefit the college and the endowment would go up from that, what that does is see the endowment up at the college it's a pay. Uh, it's self-insured. It pays for their workman's comp, yeah, their the, health care. The college pays as they go, and their retirement. Yeah. So what happens is, uh, uh, when my brother worked there, it was like this: they didn't have workman's comp on him. They pay as they go. So if somebody got hurt, then they just went ahead and paid for it like workman's comp. So they they were they self-insured, and they did that with a lot of different things, like the, the all the benefits for uh, the health benefits and everything for the maintenance guys. That was all self-insured through the college. What happened was they didn't put any money into anything. They, they took the endowment and put it into an account, and that account grew, and then if somebody got sick and had to go to the hospital, they paid out of that account to take care of the hospital bill. So that's kind of how they're, they were so, self-insured. So the endowment is benefit essentially, whether it be health care benefits or whether it be... If we vote on projects that are directly benefiting the college and... Or indirectly. Make, or indirectly, and make their endowment go up in any way, the people that are on our council that work for the college <laughs> pay into a... Rep- <laughs> wait, wait a minute, <laughs> This is comical because, like, the airport's a prime example. Sure. So, so, them vote, so if, if Councilman Bell decided to vote on that airport, you're telling me that his endowment could potentially go up? I'm, I'm saying the, I'm, I'm saying, what I'm saying is if they are voting on anything that indirectly or directly benefits the college and the endowment goes up, they are bready, buttering their breads, people, let, let because me, they, uh, <laughs> they, they, this, that makes their retirement let me, better. Let me give the example here. <laughs> let me give the example. This is crazy. This is crazy talk, right? This, this NES project that they're doing, what they're trying to do is create these big, beautiful homes that they want these people that are Fortune 500 company owners. And this is owned owners, by the college, right? right yeah, right on uh, Manning. It, it is going to be a benefit to the city someday. Well, someday. But I don't agree with Mackie that whatever benefits the college benefits the city. That's not true. So- what happens is he's let's a college say, sucker. Yeah, I know, but let's say I built let's say I build a, a you know f- a, a eight eight five million dollar homes, okay, and I want to sell that to people that are Fortune five hundred company people that are retiring and going to give me an endowment, right? But they want to be able to fly in. So if I'm Councilman Bell and I'm voting on that airport, which is going to benefit them being able to sell those homes to those people to leave endowments to them, is it or is it not benefiting? Bell in the long run through the endowment. It sure is. Oh it my sure God, is. This so is re- this is this the is this is the example. Now I'm not saying that that is the example that happened. I'm saying I'm using that as a <laughs> I'm using that as a this complete cr- hypothetical. Are right? Are you serious? Right. So my thing is, if the city says, "Oh well, Rutan's crazy," as uh, Mr. Wallet put on your thing, he said, "I'm uh, nuts." Yeah. Um, but know. anyway, so if that's the case, they, and I'm really well, just nuts. I hate to think what they think about me. Well, it doesn't matter to me. I don't care, um, especially certain people I really don't care but anyway if I am nuts okay then that the reason why I can say that is because the city hasn't been transparent enough so that I can't right so if you're trying to say that I'm saying it's a conspiracy I'm not the truth is the truth 
And so all these conspiracy theories that they're trying to say that we're coming up with, it's not a conspiracy. It's just truth. I'm not saying that there's a dark, smoke-filled room somewhere with secret handshakes, but it is. It might as well be. Jesus. But, but it is <laughs> self-evident truth. It's natural law. People, what was it that Madison said? This is the faction that's sown in the very nature of man. And so it's not hard to understand. So when we come up with this, that this is what's happening, and that and we have a for instance like that, people go, oh, routine, you're nuts. Am I really? If I'm nuts... Why is it I can say that? If you were transparent, I couldn't say that, right? So am I nuts or is it that the city's just so unethical that they're not transparent enough to keep people from being able to say that stuff, well, right? Well, outside of Bell, Councilman Bell, who else is involved with the college? Uh, well, Pat Flannery just, uh, he, his he, term he, just he's expired. He's county, right? Yeah. He, I, he, no, he was a uh, uh, city councilman. Oh, he was city. Yeah, okay. he was city councilman. City council. He, He's the one that uh, made the the uh, the satan- six 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 yeah, yeah the satanic, satanic six yeah satanic, satanic six yeah in fact I think I think the three of us would fit in that that yeah scene, oh yeah yeah, yeah. We're, we're we're part of that I, I might satanic I might be the six. seventh or eighth but I'm yeah, just yeah, <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't matter they, but, we all okay. fit in the six so who else thought up Patrick Flannery and Bell is is that uh, it? well we got uh, Will Morrissey and you know I really love Will he's a great guy uh, I, he's well what's I, he part of. Well, he's a retired uh, political science teacher. No, is he on any boards or anything? He's on our city council. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's on the city council, too. He's retired yeah. political he's science re- professor from Hillsdale And he, li- he liked our show, Joe. You said he liked our he, show, He right? did like our show. Right. And We can't uh, say nothing negative about him, right? No, no. I, 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 <laughs> that's not what it's about. We're going to call the truth the truth. I like Will. <laughs> yeah, I, I do, really too. I really like Will, and I really, really so, so like is that, Greg Stuchel. Is, yeah. is, that, uh, is that all that's associated with the college, though? I mean, No, in, no. In you had Matthew you had, Bell. Yeah, and you had no, Bill, Bill Zeiser that was... Uh, yeah, Bill Zeiser. He was, taking he, a, he was taking a program there, and he was being paid a stipend while he... Now, he's not doing it now, but he was doing that when he was on the council. And so that begs uh, some scrutiny. Well, l- let me tell you something, people. A stipend isn't free. No, that's money. Well, that's what, money being what paid. What is that? What is it? I don't even know what a stipend is. A stipend is... Uh, this is what all... <laughs> this is what Benjamin Franklin argued that, our, had to do that our government should be paid is a stipend, not a salary. A stipend is uh, just enough for you to be able to survive, pay food, rent, whatever, just to survive. Like $1,000 a month. Yeah, just a survival thing. And But instead... Our government now, we've got, well, we got congressmen making $127,000 oh, yeah, yeah. a year. No, does, no, no. Look no, at no. John McCain. We got or some like commissioners that. Right Give them $12,000, Hill- and that's good. We got some commissioners probably making that right here in Hillsdale. Well, we, you know, th- that's just like I, I, Brad Benzing and I got into it one time because he said, well, he, when he was on the county. county who, who was it? Uh, Brad Benzing. Oh, okay. Or, and, or, he, yeah, Brad Benzing. Yeah. Oh, and he's the township supervisor. He's township down supervisor the, down to Woodbridge now. Woodbridge, yeah. And, and, and don't get me wrong. I like Brad. I like Brad. I think Brad's a great guy. Yeah, I like Brad. But I'm still going to call a spade a spade. Yeah. And it, that doesn't mean, just because, I, look, just because I say that I don't agree with somebody on something doesn't mean that I think they're That's evil right. or that I, I don't I, like I, them. I disagree. I'm, uh, I'm just going to call it why I disagreed I disagreed with him on Facebook and we had gotten that, sure, t- that sure. argument. Sure, sure. I'm just going to call it as I see it. But he's a great guy. Sure. And you know, I wouldn't expect him to agree with me on everything either. Right, I, right. I, I, you know, I, I, he can call me nuts if he wants to. Everybody does. So I'm not going to take that personal. I'm not. It's not going to hurt my feelings. But Brad and I got into it one time because he said, "Well, working on county, being a county commissioner." He said, uh, we don't get paid that much. He said, we only get paid about $6,000. And I said, well, geez. And, he, you know, and they did put a lot of time in. Yeah. I did see the time he was putting in. I thought, wow, $6,000. Brad puts a lot of time in. Yeah, that's not, that's not much for what they're doing. And then I find out they got a $20,000 benefit package. And I was like, D- no, dude, you're getting 26000 No, no, we're only getting I said, no, your benefit package is an is a benefit to you it's an income to you I, it's just like me I, a lot of times a lot of jobs i took i didn't take for the pay i took for the benefits cuz the benefits were good that yeah. i mean most of us or take do a that. lower paid job sure, because, of the because of the benefits so the benefits mean something you have to add that into the total of what you're getting yeah. to you know to go okay yeah is it worth it is that job worth it yeah it is worth it your base salary might be low but sure, that's not i the, i took a job one time that figured package. out that it should be $72,000 a year i took it for $60,000 a year why? Because they offered a benefit package that was that would have taken it to the seventy-two thousand dollar mark or better, and so that's what I looked at. I said, mm, "Okay, that that makes it worth it." Now, when they were getting a, they're getting a twenty thousand dollar benefit. That is part of it. So when you start looking at it, you go, "Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute!" When the people out here that you're serving have a worse medical package than what you have, we got a problem. 
We got a real problem. We got people that are serving in the United States Army and their medical is provided by the military. Why can't, I mean, we've got a, we've got a military hospital right close to Washington, D.C. Why can't, why can't we just say anybody that's working for government has to have the same thing that people serving in the military have? Go to a military hospital. If that was the case, our military hospitals would be way better than they are right now. <laughs> and there would never be a problem with yeah. a VA hospital. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> so we got uh, all the projects. We got the Union Street Project, Kiefer, Kiefer House. Kiefer and the Don. The Don. Mm-hmm. We got the airport, got the right? Airport. All the stuff that's going on at the airport, right? I'm sure there's other things that we what, don't even what know What other about. projects uh, that are... The, that uh, there was a project uptown. Uh, Mary Wolfram got uh, from temporary city manager at the time, Doug Terry, $600,000 grant. To fix up the apartments up above Toasted Mud, and there were certain locations, but Toasted Mug, Toasted, toasted mud. mud. What is that? It's a yeah, pottery shop. Yeah, the um, the lady that runs it, um, she used to be uh, the art teacher for my daughters when they went to Sock Trail. And what it is is she's she does pottery where you can come in. They've got bisque that's already fired. Oh, how cool! And you can paint it up and do different things. You can have parties there, and kids love to do it. And then they put it in the kiln, they fire it, and then you can come back in and well, pick shout, it up. Shout out to her. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. But, it's, but, it's but a here's really cool here's shop. here's the catch. Here's the catch on the $600,000 that Mary was given for those projects. Uh, These were projects that um, these people were going to fix up the existing upstairs of buildings that were pretty much, you know, gutted and and not usable. They were going to turn them into a a nice living space for apartments. And the first time renters could be low income or middle class. But after, you know, once they moved out, then... They could rent the apartments out at at whatever market value or better if they wanted to. Okay, but here's the catch. You had to have $25,000. There were six six projects. They were donating donating $100,000 to each apartment. The apartment owner or the owner of the building had to come up with $25,000 to be able to To match. It was a matching. Yeah, it was a matching deal. uh, Right, so... I'm not, I I had just sent an email out to David Mackey and I wanted all the itemized, you know, receipts and everything showing yeah, that. Sure. Because, because on the, on the resolution, it shows $65,000 going to contractor services. Mm. And then the 600,000 said, um, contractor services rehab grant. Last time I knew folks. She's she's a contractor for the city, yeah, but it's oh. the Hillsdale Policy Group, not contractor services. I see what you're. I, what, I so okay. John, why don't I'm you following explain, it here. Why don't you explain that a little bit? What he's saying, John. What uh, I this is just supposition at this point in time, and this is why you're doing the FYA to get all the information. Yeah, Mackie. And, won't, and this, and but look, what it appears. Well, John, this is, let me let me make it clear too, because Joe gets um, can sometimes get a bad name because Joe kind of jumps the gun sometimes and he starts saying stuff and he doesn't actually have all the information. Well, a lot of people are like, "You're a conspiracist, Joe." I but end he, up coming usually, up. Usually, he it. usually comes up with all that, the information. Well, yeah, usually, said, the, yeah. yeah, usually the stuff's yeah. right. You, you know, can't that, hide that, anything from me, folks. Yeah, yeah. That, so that you know, like opening up these caskets and finding skeletons and yeah. so this is what we need people to do though sure. in our community so like it's it's kind of like people belittling joe but joe's actually going out and doing the hard work and finding the information I, and, and then putting it out to well, the public but the people that belittle him are the same people that would uh, walk into the slaughterhouse uh and think that the guy with the gun to their head is their best friend these same people do this all the time i see it i mean even I, in I, our own group i mean we get a lot of infighting and and sure and, and they, they you know joe i I don't know what kind of uh, Joe can rub people the wrong way because sure. he doesn't necessarily have everything right with him at that exact moment. Well, he's pretty direct too. Right, and a lot well, of people don't like direct. I tell you what, we were just talking about Dr. Morrissey's sitting councilman. I, I I'm not sure what ward, but he's he's a, a a good friend of mine, and I really like the guy. You know what his nickname for me is? 
bulldog you were saying? He calls me. He, he calls me a little bulldog. Well, my nickname for you was barbarian. Like I was a nerd growing uh, I, up. I really like Will's nickname. <laughs> I was a nerd growing up, and I played Dungeons and Dragons, and we always had the barbarian going and attack the dragon first. The berserker. You know? Yeah. The berserker. The berserker. <laughs> that's right. You know. So that's how I view you, Joe. Yeah. So like I, we, you know, there's always a good place for someone like this because Joe, you you do a lot of work to to reveal this stuff and get uh, it out I work to the public. 50, 60 hours a week, but you know, I I I'm just a damn good researcher and it just takes time and it's all about how you ask and, the computer and, and if, the question and if you even if you didn't have some of the facts uh you have majority of the facts with you and it does draw for question and it's not just up for joe to find this stuff out it's for the average citizen to find this well, stuff too. Right, we need help we've got a lot of people That's looking right. and um we need more than just five or six of us that are doing but the work you know here. the thing is if, if you see something that's walking like a duck and it quacks <laughs> And you go well. I think it's a duck, and you don't have, you don't have a picture of it. Uh, people want to want to treat you like you're bad for for guessing that maybe it's a duck. Okay, what's wrong with? Because see, this is what an investigation starts on. It starts on a hunch that something's not right. 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 So, and then you start looking into things. So, if everybody's walking around with the, well, you can't assume that until you have all the information. Well, why would I look for all the information unless well, I assume that, right? Well, uh, we don't. We don't have to at City Council. They make it so damn obvious, well, they, John. Yeah, I know. They, they, well, they John, make it we, easy. We talked about this in our first episode. That I, I, I'm not. I don't know the Constitution by heart. But man, I could tell you when there's red flags, like, oh, that don't sound right. So let me go research it. Yeah. And that's exactly what you do, Joe. You're like, whoa, that don't sound right. Yeah. Let me go take a look. All you gotta do is pay attention. What? I mean, it's common sense. Even, even if it doesn't sound right, if somebody tells me that it's blue, you know what? Prove it to me. Show me. Yeah. So we I'm not gonna just accept that it's blue because you said it's so, blue. So I, I you know, I gotta give kudos to you, Joe, for all the hard work that you do. But we digressed into that. Um you were talking about this project, but this project particularly that you're talking about did doesn't sound like it's benefiting the college. So it sounds like they do other projects that don't benefit the college well, necessarily, too. It, it, I, I will give Mary one thing. I, I, I believe this $600,000 that she got for these rehab departments, if I'm not even sure how many people qualified or had the $25,000 to actually match the grant, but uh, it did benefit uh, the first runner. Now, I, I, my feeling is after that first runner was gone, you know, Mary's wanting to bring more people downtown. So, you know, we just got done saying two, three hundred people or three, two, three hundred kids lived off campus. Mm -hmm. And I'm almost sure Mary yeah, directed them right up there. there. Sounds like she's batting one for six. Yeah. So, like, you got but, five bad projects. Well, and, but here's uh, the thing, you know, even, one, a, right? even a blind squirrel finds a nut, right? So, <laughs> so you can't, well, <laughs> we don't even know if this is a good project. Six hundred thousand dollars sounds right. like a lot of money too. But you know, the, the thing is, okay, so not a hundred percent of them are for the college, but if ninety nine of them are and one isn't, that doesn't mean that it's right, <laughs> not right. a college. It, so this eco program. economic development group uh, that she's a part of, that she owns, sounds like it's a not in the best interest of the people. It is not in the best interest of the people who we have now. Doesn't help the townies. Uh, no, no. And <laughs> a matter of fact, I you know um, I do a lot of council meetings. I I do a lot of research, and uh, actually, who I suggested for uh, our new ED was Kelly Lapresto. She's a local. She's a native. She knows how to write grants. She did grant writing for the senior center. She got hired at Hillsdale. She's under Mackey now. And um, I told her husband to make sure that Kelly applies for that job and told her it paid Is, 40. Do we, do we need an ED, economic development? We, we do, do we need, need some economic development. What do you think, John? Joe thinks we need it. What do you think, John? Economic development is good. Uh, it just you it has to be directed to the right places. I don't have a problem with economic development as long as it is completely transparent and it's not government picking the winners and picking the losers. This is the problem. When we start making business part of government where government decides, then it's just another government program. Well, if you've got a board that's <laughs> that's got collusion with the college already. Uh, that, uh, that would be the TIFA board, and yes, we do. Uh, yeah. You know, like, I, so if you got these boards that are already colluding in, in issues and not including the, bo like, city board, that it seems like that they're on the dole with the college. I, I mean, I don't know how, if I'm explaining that right, but it seems like they're in bed with the college. Yeah, uh, they're 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 sharing the same. Yeah, like how, how do we how do we how do you get a fair shake with the no, economic, me, economic development? Let me clear something up here real quick, just just a little bit. Not everything has to be 
um, monetary uh, where where the college is paying somebody that's on that board. Okay, number one. Right. Number right. two, we're not suggesting that uh, there's a dark smoke filled room somewhere where right. these guys go in and the college says, okay, this is what we want you to bring up and this is what you want to vote on. Okay, there's a there's such a thing that's called loyalty. Um, I see it all the time. When I worked at the college, once a year, everybody would come in in their maize and blue on one side of the room. It's a brotherhood. And everybody would come in in their red and, or in their green and white on the other side of the room. And here I am sitting there, and here, I'm looking at these people that are supposed to be educated people. And I said, what's, what, what's, what's wrong with you people? They said, what? I said, how about if I bring in a rutan management coat, you guys pay double what it's worth, and wear it around campus for me? Well, no. I said, why? Well, that's free advertising. I said, that's right. But... You're going to pay these people eighty to $100,000 for a piece of paper to hang on your wall, buy a coat that's double what it's worth, ear, so you can wear, walk, little, wear, wear it around to get other people to go? You're a little short on that dollar amount. Well, but you see what I'm saying? The, the thing is, it, it's it's this it's this loyalty thing, the be true to your school idea. Oh, I see so what you're saying. People, so there's so like the even the workers or the people that are from Hillsdale are going to be loyal to the college. Sure, because they're so proud of the college and what it stands the for. pride. So what will happen yeah. is they'll do things that are in the interest of the college just out of sheer blind pride. Those aren't the people we want in government. We want the people in government we to look at We need a little bit more critical thinking all. there. That's uh, right. They're, we want they're critical also in, They're also encouraged to um, get into uh, local government. And oh, sure. They're, they're in a, a lot of our offices. Uh, look at Alan Beaker. He's uh, part what, of this. What are you talking about? One of the, uh, um, there was a, a vice president of external affairs at Hillsdale College by the name of Ron Trowbridge. And I'm just going to put it out there. Ron told me one night, he said one of the secondary duties he had as a vice president was he either had to run for city council, had to run for county uh, board, or he had to run for one of the township boards, or he had to sit on the board of the hospital. And uh, so he chose to sit on the board of the hospital. I said, why is that? He said, I'm not, I'm not going to. Uh, he said, I'm not a trained monkey going to run uh, for somebody to elect me to a board. He said, I'll just sit on the hospital board. And yeah. he didn't even like sitting on that board, but it was a secondary duty that he had to do. And so he's the one that told me that all the upper administration at the college have secondary duties in which they either get on all these boards. This is why Payway's on all these boards. This is why Payway's on the hospital board and he knows, or on, not on, I'm sorry, on the airport board. And he knows nothing about an airport. He knows nothing about aviation or aviation safety. He, and, yeah, he's not a, a, lot he's of not a hosp- pilot. A lot of the hospital board is, aren't they part of well, that? Yeah, it used too? to be. Ron Trowbridge used to sit on that hospital board. Um, and, and let me back you up there, John. My grandpa used to be the dean at Hillsdale College for 32 years, and uh, our family had heard that too. Yep, okay. So there you go. So uh, so they're intertwined, you're saying, yeah, with local so, governments. So, so it's, it's the, Whether it be it's, all, all, yeah, any it's of the these tail, boards. It's the tail that wags the dog. And whenever we say, well, it's benefiting the college, and the college wants it, everybody goes, oh, you guys are conspiracy theorists. You know, they're not paying those people. They're not telling them what to say. We're not saying that. We're not saying that they're telling Will Morrissey what to do. But I'm sure right. Will Morrissey, if he worked there that many years, he's got some pride about the college. Right, same with Bell. We're sure, not saying well, that yeah, Bell's... That doesn't make them bad people. Yeah, I don't think Bell's human. a bad guy at all. Yeah, it makes them human. But what we're asking them to do is think about that. Critically think. Don't necessarily yeah, they should, do they something should out themselves. of loyalty. It's called it, morals ethics and integrity, integrity. Yeah. yeah that's our first episode john yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh so he should just remove himself from a vote even if it's a, a yeah, director he should, and he direct. should just even abstain if, even if he doesn't benefit it's what it looks like to right. people and that's the ethics and, and, yeah and that's the whole thing so when people go well this is what's going on people go oh well that's a conspiracy theory you know what we couldn't say that if you were transparent right Right. So just be transparent so that nobody can say that stuff. And then you don't have to call us conspiracy theorists. and We don't have to wonder what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, this is about we're going to wrap it up here. This is the end of the show. Uh, hopefully Joe comes back and he starts doing his own show. Joe, Joe's got a plethora of information that he wants to come out on. He's got uh, individuals that he wants to come out on. He, this is a uh, this is a big deal. This is where a lot of our money's going to going to. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you for coming on the show, Joe. And uh, hopefully you can start doing your own show and you can start using our equipment. And uh, hopefully it's going to be like a biweekly or a weekly or a monthly or whatever you want to do. Again, I I do want to just hi- kind of highlight too is. Uh, if anything's said that irritates anybody, you know what? I I know you're going to complain about it at the coffee shop, but uh, give us a call. Yeah, come on, yeah, give come us on a down. call. We're all on Facebook. We got a we got a mic that's open for you, you and ready. It. Yeah, come set and talk. Come come debunk our. That's right. You know, set and talk. also for the for our listeners too, if anybody that wants to come out publicly on something, or if anybody wants to talk to us about something, a grievance, whether it be something that in their local town, John and I, just to recap. Uh, 
We got uh, we're over in Adams trying to help them recall their board. Uh, they got a lot of issues over there with uh, nuisance ordinance. Oh, and so if you got issues in your community, feel free to hit us up on Facebook. You can call us. Uh, you can message us. You can come on the show. And we can even put you in touch with other people that are going through the same thing or that have gone through the same thing that have experience. That's right. We and need it, to start helping one another and learning from one and another. It, and if you uh, and if you th- feel that you want to come on and do your own show, you're more than welcome to give us a call or message us, and uh, we'll try to make something happen for you. So uh, I let, j- let me let me say one more thing before go we go off air here. I wanted to, I, I didn't get to hit on um, public officials that sit on certain boards that are misinforming the public. Well, why don't you and, give us an example, Joe? Well, I was debating the other night with uh, Eric Moore on uh, Hillsdale Hottest Debates. No, well, who's Eric Moore? Eric Eric Moore sits on, I believe, TIFA, doesn't he, John? I'm I'm not or positive. Maybe, I, I'm not sure what board he sits it's on. It's one of those sub boards from the yeah. city. I'm, I'm not sure which one either. So we were debating, and uh, you know, Eric throws out uh, this comment saying, uh, "Well, uh, revenue sharing is down four hundred thousand dollars from a decade ago." Well, I got right on the Michigan website. I went back two decades, and we were only down like 206000 And then I reread his comment and said, huh, he only said a decade, so I'll go back uh, a decade. And uh, when I went back a decade, I found that uh, our rev- revenue sharing was only down $41,039 from 10 years ago. Ooh, so Eric, was Eric added uh, a, a, another zero on the end of that, folks, and, and misinformed the public on social media and didn't know what the hell he was talking about. But a, but a zero is worth nothing, right? So it doesn't, doesn't matter. <laughs> it does when it's six digits versus five. five. Well, why would the average citizen care about that, Joe? Why Or, John, either one of you, could you explain, explain why would the average citizen well, care about what Eric Moore had to that's say? That's because that's when we come down to you and go, well, see, that's why your streets aren't fixed, so you need to give us more money. Well, wait a minute. You had the money for the streets because you're only down 41000 so where's this 400000 you got to come up with? Yeah, I mean, instantly what I thought about his comment was, when he misinformed or tried to misinform me on the revenue sharing, I thought to myself, "Well, you either don't know what the hell you're talking about, or somebody's cooking the books." Or, well, let's, well, well Joe, to be fair here, let's let's hopefully we get a response. Maybe, yeah. there, maybe, maybe we're misinformed on something, and and no, we, somebody can explain it. Uh, I nailed him on it, and uh, <laughs> it was like crickets. Well, cheap, you get that cheap, a lot, but the, but the thing is, if somebody can, if somebody can prove the numbers. Come on! I yeah, got him right here. I, know, I got him right here, I know, John. But but he, I'm gonna I'm gonna state of Michigan right here. I'm gonna, fall, I'm gonna fall back on something my grandfather always used to say. He said, "Numbers don't lie, but liars or figures don't lie, but liars can figure." And therein lies the problem, right? I mean, I, I brought I brought them for you guys to look at. I've got state of Michigan revenue sharing for 2016. I went back a decade, pulled up. 2006, 2007. So you got local subboard people going on social media, misinforming the audience. Yeah, it's called misinforming or, the public. And um, when you sit on a board like that or you're any kind of public official, that's a no-no. Now let me play devil's advocate here just a little bit too. Right. Maybe Eric didn't see those numbers and didn't have the time to go through those numbers. And I've been on boards before. When he we said didn't... he ran the numbers. I know. He told me he ran the numbers. But yeah, he but... ran the numbers he was given. Yeah. Sometimes what happens is, and he I've said. Been, he might have been a mistake, too. And I've said on boards before, too, where somebody's come down and said, okay, this is what it is. Well, we didn't have time to take it, so we took it off their notes that that's what it was. And we come to find out that's not exactly what it was because they misled us, too. That happens sometimes. I'm just going to play devil's advocate there, and I'm just going to say that. I'm going to play devil, devil's advocate and say uh, he either didn't know what he's talking about or he was being coached because it sounded like something Gary Wolfram would say. I'm not going to disagree with that. <laughs> I'm not going to disagree with that. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it open. All right, we're going to wrap it up here because uh, we're running into our time here. So I just wanted to say good night to the audience, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Good night. Good night.